Yeah, now I'm going to be going off for a holiday uh, break, visit my family for a while. Apparently somebody blew up. Hello. Anyways, uh, so I won't be actually on the server, so I decided I'd make this quick little tutorial to kind of help you guys along on your first day. Um, as always, you can ask anybody who's a commoner. They've been on the server enough that they can answer basic questions. Barons know a lot more and can answer a lot of your questions. And of course, any GM that's on will definitely help you out. So definitely uh, ask away if you need any help, and I'll definitely be back on to help you guys as soon as I can. Also, before I start, I want to mention that um, if you're going to be playing on our server, it's really suggest like a highly recommended thing to do is download Spoutcraft. You can Google it. Um, I'll also have a link in the description below, which will bring you straight to the client. And it's just like Minecraft. You open it up, you log in like your Minecraft account. Nothing gets stolen or anything. You just log into Minecraft like normal. But it adds a lot of cool features. And I'll just go ahead and show you a few of the simple ones. You'll see a couple of them later on in this video. But one of them is uh, called Texture. Type in that. And you can see texture packs that we have on the server. This one's mine, the steampunk one. Majestic Wind, who's another GM of ours, uses Ovo Rustic. One of the temples on our server uses the Assassin Texture Pack. So if you're using, if you're playing this temple either by yourself or with your friends, you can switch to this Texture Pack, and it looks a lot better because it was made with that Texture Pack. So you know that's why that's there. We also have you know Cobblecraft, and we're going to add more over time. Uh, but you can't see this with a normal, uh, you know, Minecraft account. You have to have Spoutcraft to use it, and it's easy. All you do is you click, and it'll tell you that it's downloading. It'll download it to your computer and pop it up the moment that it's downloaded so it's very useful for that I'm gonna go ahead and wait for this to switch there we go so see easy switch um, if you've already downloaded it then it downloads a lot quicker it also depends on your internet speed and all that stuff um, so that's very useful another one is F4 will show you the angle that you're looking at and your XYZ coordination so that's very useful as well but you can only get that with Spellcraft now that I've explained kind of the spout crafty things, um, oh, Nate, I need to answer this one. He's brand new to the server, so, anyways, this will be basically your first. Oh, he found it. <laughs> uh, room that you'll enter into. Uh, you should read all signs that you see in this very beginning because they're there for a reason. Obviously, yay, free gifts. Woohoo! So I got a cookie and a blank book and some wooden tools. Very useful. And now it says right click the bookshelf to read books. So you can just right click it without anything in your inventory. Um, you can also copy it, as you see up here, left click to copy the rules. So I'm going to go and left click here. And now I can right click with the book and it'll show me the same rules. Now I'm not going to go ahead and read through this. It's 15 pages, but I mean a page is like a paragraph and a half. And it's, you know, big, big font. So it's really not that long. It doesn't take you much to read it. Um, but it does tell you all of the server rules. So definitely read this because, you know, us as GMs, if you do something that's against the rules, you have no excuse. You'll just, you know, be put in jail and saying, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Uh, it's not going to cut it because you should have <laughs> type of thing. So obviously read before you go on. Uh, we got a wanted poster on my texture pack. Uh, I don't know what the painting is on the normal one. I've never seen it. I don't play the default a lot. Uh, this is basically explaining Locket, which is a plugin that we use to protect chests and doors in your property. So you can prevent people from stealing your stuff. And if you don't want them in a room, you can lock it as well by putting a chest or a sign on top and labeling it private. Or you can slap it on the door as well and it'll do it just like the chest. Um, and here, ooh, more stuff. So let's go ahead and get another book. And we'll copy this. Uh, this is the command chat. So as I said, you can right click while holding the book. And this will tell you all the basic commands for our chat. I'll go ahead and cover the very basics here. First off, when you say something in chat by just hitting the T key to bring up the chat and you say something, only people who are within, oops, I meant hello, not hello. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, only people who are about 50 blocks away from you and in the same world you're in will read that. So if I'm in a different world, like I'm in Andoria and you're in Baldric, I won't understand you because I won't see the message. Uh, so to, you know, get my attention, you can either use slash n your message, 
which is nation. Uh, you can use slash shout, but only use this if you need help. So, you know, say help or, you know, bug or something like that. Or even if somebody just logged on, you can say hello or welcome or hi or welcome back. You can shout those type of things, but don't spam the shout. Um, the other way of doing it is private messages, which is PM the player name. So if you're trying to get a hold of me, it'll just be FE Python and then whatever you feel like saying. If I PM you, it'll say on the very bottom here, it'll say from FE Python in gray with little circles around it. If you want to reply directly to me, just hit R and then your message and it'll reply to whoever PM'd you last. That's the basics of this one, but it is good to read it there too so that you can get a better understanding. Um, I also got a sign, which you can use to lock your first chest, and two potions of instant healing, which is very useful in case you know you were in the wilderness and you got hurt. So definitely save those, because uh, they're the only free potions you're going to get, unless you complete quests and things like that, which we haven't set up yet. But we plan to add quests later on, so if we do, you might get potions for that. Now, here is basically saying how you join our server. If you're interested, you need to go to andoria.crazyforus.com and you can go to this link or you can just go on the form and info, there's how to join right there. But if you type in slash at the very end of this slash t1 dash how dash two dot join dash r dash sure, it'll bring you directly to the form. And on the first page, it tells you what you need to fill in and to actually officially be a part of our server. Other than that, you're a serf, and serfs can't build, they can't buy anything, uh, but they can explore. So you don't have to join our server to check things out. You just can't do anything in our server besides explore. Now here's obviously our GMs. We got the Wombat of Doom. We got me, Iron Python. I know it says FE Python, but that's the periodic table uh, element symbol for iron. And we've got Majestic Wind. And whatever mysterious liquids are pumping in here to supply us with the energy we need while we're away. Then you just turn around the corner. This is really a one path hallway. I mean, you, you can't go anywhere else. So don't worry about getting lost or anything. And then just go in here and it'll teleport you to Baldrick. We have these um, teleporters set up throughout the world. And like all of our ships and that kind of thing will bring you to places and it won't be like something you push on you just walk into a certain part of the structure like that I set up that little box um, now you'll stop spawn right here on the center of Baldrick this is the town square uh, I'm gonna cover the basics of the town square and then I'm gonna cover uh, where you can start so first off the basics of town square here's Walter he's our rumor mill you saw him at the very beginning I Pretended he was a Venture Man. Yeah, Venture Man. And, um, but he's not really a Venture Man. He's just Walter the Rumor Mill. When you walk up to him, he will uh, say some kind of rumor. Uh, that's kind of our bulletin board message of the day kind of thing that some servers have. Ours, we use Walter here. So you walk up to him and he'll say something like, Oh, I hear they've uncovered a new temple. Or, hmm, there's a new shop opening up in the Wizard's Keep. Which, by the way, the Wizard's Keep is the structure that's up the stairway. Right there, you can kind of see the point of it. That's the Wizard's Keep. That's the observatory, and that's the ancient library. So he'll say things like that. He also has, uh, just for now, these will be removed eventually. But, because uh, we had so many people join his server, they missed the bottom floor one. So we added it here again, uh, so that they could read that. But anyways, um... So he'll say things like that, so definitely check him. If you haven't been on in a while, just kind of walk over to him, he'll automatically say it. And you can see if there's a new room or anything. Uh, Paul is having issues buying stuff, he keeps forgetting that he's typing the message wrong. Um, but shops can be set up by uh, personal users. So this one's a user-made shop, and he replaced a sign saying miscellaneous goods. So you know, you can just left click, um, hmm, sulfur for six drinks, I'll buy that, feel like you know, helping him out. So I'll go ahead and buy three of them. So all you do is hit enter and three. There's the simple tutorial on how to buy things. I'll make a more detailed tutorial later on. NPC shops are right, of course, here in this convenience store building. This building and the Wizard's Keep up there are the places where the NPC shops are. This structure and the town square all around there is all uh, user shops. And that's the blacksmith building. He sells some NPC stuff. And for right now, because he's a wandering tradesman, he moves around. Right now, the wandering tradesman is right there. He sells super rare items, which are 
items that you can't get in the game normally, including bedrock. Yes, you can buy bedrock on our server, but it takes a million drex to buy, and you only start off with 16,000, so you got quite a ways to go. But if you're on our server long enough, you can buy bedrock and, you know, make a room out of bedrock, and it's kind of like your monument, because uh, it's super hard to get. Now, before we go anywhere, I want to explain that there is a fork in the road here, and the fork here is sp actually meant uh, purposely. Are you a survivalist player, or do you like just creative playing? Because depending on which path you take is how you start on our server. Now, you can do both on our server. You can be in the survival world and the creative world. It just, you have to earn money to buy enough for both. Because you only have enough money to purchase a plot in one or the other. If you're into survival, then you need to go down here towards the uh, harbor. I'll go ahead and cut over to there for you. All right, we're back at the harbor. I'm trying to cut it as short as possible. I'm trying to explain as much as I can and make it short. It's kind of complicated to do. Anyhow, here's our harbor. Uh, here's another NPC shop. He sells fish and fishing poles and the pub, which is just a pub. Katika works there. Also, if you haven't noticed, our NPCs do have skin. All of them have a custom skin specifically designed, even though the uh, even the females like Katika here. If you don't have Spoutcraft, you're just going to see the default Minecraft texture for all these guys, unless they, you know, somebody actually owns that Minecraft account name, then they have their texture. So it won't look as good. So definitely use Spoutcraft because, you know, we pick texture skins specifically for who they were, uh, and so it looks a lot better on Spoutcraft. But this is uh, Saturn. It will bring you to Andoria, which will allow you to buy your first plot in the survival world. I'll go ahead and show you how to buy a plot. I won't go into much detail, but I will show you it after I show you the uh, creative world area. Oh, he was shot by a skeleton. Sorry, Dark Mage, you were shot by a skeleton. Anyways, uh, I will quickly go. Actually, I won't even cut. I'll show you. Here's to the air dock. Now, there's an el or there's a ladder here and an elevator here. Now, the elevator only goes down, and the reason why is some people who have a laggy connection, like they have poor internet or for whatever reason, if they try and use the elevator going up, it can kill them. So we remove the up elevator um, and replace it with a ladder here so that people who have slower internet can go up and down with no problem. And when you're ready to go down, you just hit this button. I'll show you that in a bit. Hey, guys, what's up? This is one of the NPCs that if you have just minecraft running you have a different texture pack than this normal one it's this weird guy with a face on his belly <laughs> but anyways estrada is our creative world you can go here and you can buy a plot of land i'll quickly run over there and show you our creative world and you can basically buy a plot of land that's creative so that means you can fly around, you have infinite amount of items, you can hit E for your inventory and see everything, but your inventory is separate. So you can't like stack diamonds into your inventory, see my inventory is separate from what it was before. So I can't go down here to where diamonds is and put like a stack of diamonds and go back, it won't work. Um, but you can build whatever you want here, and you can do the double jump to fly. Uh, here's some of the structures that have already been uh, built got some interesting buildings in place now if you build a building like these guys are you can't live in it it's just for looks uh, other people like cre uh, creating redstone mechanics like this person other people like doing statue artwork or even like music type stuff where you go on a minecart track and it plays a song so we gave you a nice amount of area you got 64 by 64 to build whatever you want here but you're only allowed to own one plot you have, to ask, you have to actually personally ask a GM to buy another plot. You could buy another plot, but it will get you in trouble and you will be put into jail if we notice that you're buying more than one plot. Now, all you have to do to buy a plot is you go up to a, an area where there's a gate. Each plot only has one opening. You can actually make your own because once you own it, you own up to the fence. So you can change the border however you like. You put netherrack fence or uh, whatever you want for the edge. But if it hasn't been owned... Obviously, it will have nothing in there. It will have one opening, and on front of it will be a sign that says Agent, the art plot that you're buying, and how much. Each plot for right now costs 10,000 Drex. So you just right-click it, and you own this plot for those of you who like creative stuff. Now, the only plots that are for sale are the ones with stone on the floor. The ones with grass haven't been set up yet. We'll be setting those up as plots get purchased to make sure that you know there's enough room and all that stuff. And we'll be slowly expanding this world as we need to. 
Now all you have to do to get back is just fly over here and land on the platform. And it'll bring you right back to Baldric. Now Baldric's our center world. It's, as I said, where the marketplace is. It's all of the commerce are there. You can't shop, uh, sell shops anywhere else. You'll get in trouble for doing so. Um, but you can go here and there's tons of plots available for you to sell stuff. It's also our teleporter world. So you go here to go to any other world. So like I was saying for Estrada, you needed to go to that little center plot, then run back to the harbor. I'm going to go ahead and just teleport or cut the scene till I'm in Andoria, so I won't waste your time on that. Hello and welcome to Andoria. So I went ahead and just quick cut it because, you know, I didn't want to waste your time. Ended up getting right when the sun was rising. How beautiful. Oops, wrong button. Now out there you'll see some glass and you'll be wondering what that is. Well, the reason why there's little glass panes out there is if you type in map here, you'll see like little money symbols. Keep hitting the wrong button. Money symbols right here. This is the direction I'm looking, by the way. Map will show you plots around you. Now this is the town border of Stallone, which is, Stallone, which is the town that you uh, teleport to. It's the capital of Andoria, which is the world you went to. There's tons of different towns. There's Iron Town, Old Town, Majestica, and more towns being created all the time by our barons. So definitely uh, check those out as well. And you could even be a member of them. If you go on our forums under towns, it'll let you know if that town has spots available for you guys to join or even ambassador plots. So very useful for that too. But these little glass plots or blocks are just so that people if they want to buy an ocean plot like let's say you want to buy this plot of the ocean because you like creating undersea domes or maybe you like creating a battleship or whatever um, you can buy those plots and not drown by typing in the commands and then you just destroy the glass plot or glass <clears throat> I don't know why my throat's so sore right now uh, the, the glass blocks I think I've just been talking too long trying to do these video tutorials <laughs> and explain the server to people either way um, towns are also PvP free, as well as mob free, so obviously there won't be any mobs in here, even if it's nighttime, and you can't get attacked by another player in here, so that's very useful. Uh, peaceful mobs like sheep, pigs, cows, and all that, chickens, they're okay to be here. They won't go deep spawn or anything, because, you know, they won't kill you. Uh, so you can go out and find some chickens or sheep or whatever and lead them back to your property and pin them in and create a barn for them, and they won't go away. So that's very useful to know as well. Now, if you actually want to buy a plot here, because, you know, it's survival, and you're into going out and fighting monsters and getting materials to buy buildings because you feel like building a cool-looking house in a survival world is much more gratifying than building one in a creative world where you get everything for free, well, this is definitely the world for you. But first, you need a plot to build the land. So if I wander over here, you'll see... Uh, it'll update, there you go, for sale, 15,000 Drex. Now, Drex is the currency we use in our server, and you can see how much money you have by typing in money, and there you go. Now, I don't have the default. The default is 16,000, but remember, I bought that gunpowder earlier? Well, that obviously deduced from my money, but I still have a good amount of money to buy a plot of land, which is very useful, um, because, you know, I want some place to build a house. Now, there's also a few other benefits to a town. Towns are also protected against griefing. So, you know, I can't destroy anything. It'll just be put back. It'll even tell me, you know, you can't do that sometimes. Uh, it won't spam it. I've already, yeah, tested it, so it won't show that one up. It'll probably show this one. You can't place items. Yeah, there you go. Allies aren't allowed to build. Um, so I can't place items either because that's not allowed. I can't use buckets. The only thing I can use is switches, which is doors. Uh, buttons, pressure plates, levers, um, and chests are all considered switches. So I could go in and open up someone's doors and explore their property and all that. I can also go in their chests, which is why you want to make sure you slap a sign on your chest and it'll password or it won't password protect it, but it'll, it'll protect it so only you can open that chest in your property. So definitely make sure you don't forget that. Now there's a couple ways you can see about plots. I showed you the first one, which was map, but map big will show you a larger version of it, especially for huge towns like this. It's very useful to see a large scale version of the map. Here's all of our forest plots that are for sale. Here's all of our desert plots that are for sale. And here's all of our ocean plots for sale. We're constantly increasing the size of this town as well. So 
when you check on them out, they'll probably be even more plots, maybe way out here or way over here. So definitely good to have a large version of the map. Another one is map on. This will tell you where you are on the map when you go from one plot to another plot. Until that, you know, you enter one to another, it won't show up. But once you do, it will pop up where you are. Now the orange symbol is where you are. Uh, plus symbols is a part of the town that you're in. If it's green, if it's not your town, it will be white. If it's your ally, it will be a dark green. Um, every town by default is an ally of Stallone. If you make your own town and you decide you don't want to be an ally, you can always leave, but it does put you at a disadvantage because you can't sell ambassador plots or embassy plots and that kind of stuff, which I'll explain in another tutorial. You can have enemies in the server, but it's not usually a good idea because they can go in and wreck your town if I set up a war. But uh, plots that you own will be a plus symbol. Well, first off, you need to buy a plot, so these are all for sale. So how do I buy a plot? Well, all you do is, one, make sure you have the money for it, which I do. I have 15000 And you type in plot claim. Now, it won't work for me because I don't, I'm don't. i not a resident of this town. I'm an ally, which is why all these are dark green. They're allies of my town. So it'll tell me it's not part of my town. Um, but if you did that, you would purchase this plot of land, which means you can do whatever you want to it. You can build a beachside cabin here with a tiny little dock and maybe a small boat and... You can dig down under here and mine out underneath the ground and get all the diamonds and stuff like that. And only you can build and destroy and all that in this piece of property. Very useful. Um, in the wild, though, which is a little bit more over this way. There we go. See the plots that are uh, grayed out here? This is on claim, which means it's wild. It's PvP zone, so players can attack players. It's also a monster zone, so you can get killed by skeletons and creepers and spiders and all that fun stuff. Um, it's also a uh, free-to-gather zone, which means I can... I'm just going to remove that. I can take this sand and gather it for my glass for my shop, or I can go over to a forest or that swamp over there and gather materials from there. As long as it's in the wild, you can gather from it. You can even go into the cave systems and that kind of stuff. But you can't build, so you can only gather from it. So if you get stuck in a hole, you can't like dig your way out. Um, but you uh, you can't like build your way out. But you can dig your way out. That's the only way to get around is by digging through. Uh, you can build in your own property, obviously, because you know it's yours. So definitely make sure you buy a property and all that, and just use the wilderness and your own property for gathering materials and selling them at Baldrick and all that fun stuff. Now, uh, as you can see, it's still updating. Well, if you go to Baldrick, it'll give you an error, and I'll go ahead and quickly show you that error. All right, I'm in Baldrick, and as you can see at the very bottom there, it says, Townie, this world is not using Townie. Well, it's not. And so if you have your map up, it'll keep telling you that error every time you walk from one quote-unquote plot of land to another plot of land. So to stop that, all you do is just map off. Um, that will also turn off the auto-updating map and all that stuff, so uh, you do want to make sure that you turn that off uh, before you explore, especially if it's getting in your way it keeps popping up on the text field. You can turn it off that way. Now I hope that this very basic tutorial kind of helped you out in understanding how our server set up what you can do where you can go and how you can buy the basic materials and the basic plots of land uh, I know it's a little long but I needed to explain a lot and uh, all that I will be doing more tutorials and more detail like for the shops more detail on buying plots of land as well as how to own your own town and all that kind of stuff um, and also you know about some of the other plugins we have like the book plugin uh, how do I write my own book? Well, I'll show you those kind of things. So definitely uh, keep track of my tutorials when I post them up and check out the server. It's free to explore. You don't actually have to buy anything uh, or join or anything like that. You can just explore. So uh, I shall see you all there. And this is Mr. Willie signing off. Adios.